Wait a minute, can a nurse practitioner intubate? What up, tribe? Another Daily Sean coming at you. It's been a hot minute. Been a little busy. A couple things going on. Had a question from the tribe on one of the social media channels. I think I was on Instagram doing a, a Q&A and someone asked about nurse practitioners and intubating and they had some, some seeking some clarification. They were, some were under the impression that nurse practitioners don't do any of that stuff and Others were under the impression that nurse practitioners who work in the emergency department can do all those procedures. Um, so I'm here to, to just clarify a little bit. The problem is, is that we're talking about three different things. We're talking about scope of practice, number one. We're talking about credentialing. And we're talking about privileges. The first is very different from the second and the third. The first is literally has to do with your license, your scope of practice. Are you practicing within your scope of practice? And your scope of practice is based on not just your registered nurse licensure, but your current certification and licensure for whatever specialty you're in. That has to do with your schooling as a nurse practitioner and what certification course, what certification exam you took. I am an acute, I am an adult acute care nurse practitioner, so I am able to treat the adult population in the acute care setting. That e that can be more than just the ICU. That could be in a specialty office, but most specifically it correlates to the critical care environment. The hiccup is I can only treat the adult population. So working in the emergency department for me is a little bit of a challenge as you can imagine since there are more than just adult patients that come through the emergency department. So your scope of practice has everything to do with the certification exam that you studied and passed. And that is based on whatever program you graduated from. We are talking family nurse practitioner, acute care nurse practitioner, we're talking about neonatal, we're talking about psych NPs, we're talking about adult nurse practitioners, neonatal nurse practitioners, pediatric nurse practitioners. It's a very, it's a very focused area of expertise. The last two are kind of coupled together that have to do with credentialing and privileges. And those are specific to the facility that, you're, that you work, who you work for, where you're employed, whatever system that employs you, whatever setting you're working in. If you work for a large hospital system, you could work for an inpatient or an outpatient facility. Credentialing has to do with the medical staff office in the facility you're working. What are you credentialed to do? What are your specific responsibilities? And what are they saying on paper, legally, this is what the facility is allowing you to do? Something as basic or common as doing physical assessments, h and to doing... Um, prescribing medications those are the specific credentialing details the next thing is your um, privileges what privileges have you been given within that facility my example would be I'm an acute I'm an adult acute care nurse practitioner I work with the adult population in the ICU I'm credentialed to do a specific set of tasks but I'm also given the privilege to do certain procedures. I, in my facility, as an acute care NP, 
I can do procedures. I can do invasive procedures. I can do intubations. I can do therapeutic bronchoscopies. I can do central lines. I can do arterial lines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that is, com that is completely based on what the hospital system says they're okay with you doing. In my state that is contingent upon a collaborative agreement between me and a physician. You have to have a certain level of supervision in order to do any of those procedures. In my state, I am not licensed, permitted, or legally allowed to do any of those procedures independently from... I can't do them by myself. There has to be a level of supervision. And I'm not even going to get into the details about that. You just have to understand that everything requires a level of supervision, whether that supervising physician, surgeon, doctor, is literally in the room shoulder to shoulder with you, performing it with you, or is that particular physician within a phone call's reach, or are they in the hospital system? Um, so has, it, it, I guess you could say it's location-based. And that is completely dependent upon whatever facility you work for. So if you work in a small urban, suburban town in Cleveland, outside of Cleveland, and your hospital A, and there's a hospital B that is 5, 10 miles down the road, you and that hospital are going to have very different credentialing and privileges for that particular provider, that particular advanced practice provider, whether it be an NP or a PA. And we're not even going to go into the difference between an NP and a PA. Even though the differences are minuscule, there are differences. I want you to, the takeaway is this is a complex question and answer. And if you are interested in learning more about it, you should just flat out ask, what are the practices where you're interested in being hired and working? You could, you could literally call them up. You can talk to NPs, PAs, the APPs that work in that vicinity, that facility, and you can just flat out ask them. I've been doing this for seven years now at the time of the recording of this, and it's still very muddied water. And the problem is, is that it's cha the landscape changes every year based on your facility as well as national standards, which are slowly changing as well. Because I'm imagining you may have thought of this, heard this, seen this, know this, that nurse practitioners, the way that they practice, varies from state to state. A nurse practitioner in my state is not going to have the same supervisory limitations that someone in a state two or three states away. There are certain states within the United States, I guess I should have clarified that, there are certain states in the United States where a nurse practitioner, if they meet all the minimum requirements, they have the ability to practice independently. They do not have to have a supervisory physician, they don't have to have a collaborative agreement, um, and there's there's minimum requirements in order for you to get to that stage. You can't graduate from MP school and poof, you're out practicing independently. So if you have an interest in anything that has to do with anything with nurse practitioner, you should do your homework. Contact your national and local agencies as well as contact your local facilities and you would probably it would benefit you to contact universities that you're interested in attending. Whole lot of information. Best of luck to you. Daily Sean.